Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and and uh, I decided to do something since the XRP Unleashed documentary is going to be coming out soon. I decided that I would do go back and look go back for, to some of the video that we uncovered back during this whole thing, the uncovering of ETHGATE, and do not necessarily in any particular order, but do a recap on some of the more interesting clips. That, uh, that were uncovered during that time, just to kind of refresh your memory on what all went down during ETHGATE and to refresh my memory, just so I can kind of be up to date on everything. So here we go. Here's Bill Hinman, June 14th, 2018. This is from the speech that started it all when he was talking on stage. Uh, the chairman and the SEC has been following this area carefully. They've been watching developments. Um, I think we've been tr careful not to react too quickly or to overreact to things. Uh, and we, in the case of Ether, as we see it develop, as we interact with market participants who are engaged um, in Ether transactions, you know, we keep gathering information. And at some point we say to ourselves, well, this is something that we should make clearer uh, in its current state, we don't see value regulating that. So we're trying to be uh, transparent and practical as we uh, provide more guidance. Right. Thank you. So what's important there is, remember, when they sued Ripple, they spent the, uh, at least a year while Ripple's paying money in court to be in court and, and, and try to defend themselves. They sp the SEC spent, a, a, I think it was at least a year, lying and saying that this was just Bill Hinman's personal opinion. I mean, lying every which way they could. Look at this. This is from the same day, same stage. You mentioned um, Ethereum as well. And, and so is the takeaway that these are not securities then? Right. I think the, the takeaway and maybe the news uh, is more on the Ether side. Mm -hmm. So they made it very clear that Ethereum is not a security. They have not been willing to say anything about it ever since because that's not what that speech was designed for. It, it was designed to intentionally give this vague non-clarity, but give it clarity for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Make the markets feel like it was clarity, but not really clarity. That's what they wanted to do because they knew that they could not get this done in, in a court ruling and they didn't want to issue any rulings themselves. They just flat lied about what went on there. This was later the same day Joseph Lubin gets on stage. Now keep in mind, this guy was behind the scenes meeting with them leading up until this day, and he's sitting here playing dumb like he doesn't know, he hasn't really been paying attention. He just showed up at the conference and acts like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know much about what was said. What do you think's gonna happen to Ripple with this new uh, ruling? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I wasn't able to read through um, um, Bill's entire um, speech. Does that mean he got a copy of it before the event? Read through it. I, okay. I wasn't here. Uh, I don't know if he rep, uh, if he... Look, the hands on the arm. Yeah, uh, uh, spoke about XRPs at all. Um, he didn't specifically he, mention he did anything not. about it. So that's interesting. So yeah, I mean, the fact that he named two yeah, other things but didn't a, name that one no, is certainly something just to uh, give that you should some, perk up ears. Yeah. To give you some background, back when we first started looking into all this, I didn't even know who jo Joseph Lubin was, folks, until this all started breaking. I didn't even know who this clown was. I just knew that he gave me a terrible gut feeling as I watched these kind of clips, and that's what got me going looking for more clips because I could smell that this guy was no damn good. I could smell it. You can see it a mile away. So then, remember, they were tell in court, lying in court. The SEC was saying, this was Bill Hinman's personal opinion. So the other thing we did is we started going and looking for video of anybody from the commission 
Who would have known otherwise? Because we knew it wasn't his opinion, but we went out and set about trying to prove it. This guy was my favorite guy we were able to find. His name was Robert, uh, what is it? Jackson. He is by far the favorite, my favorite find of uncovering Ethgate. I've had many folks come to me since I took office at the SEC and say, Commissioner Jackson, you should adopt a rule um, uh, uh, regarding ICOs, regarding crypto. And I say to them, every time I see them, what would that rule look like today? And they describe it. And I say, okay, in the very best case, I can get from start to finish Man, this guy on that rule ascending. in 14, 15 months. Can you assure me that in 14 months, this will be the right rule. Can you assure me that in 14 weeks, it will be the right rule? And the answer is no. That means that from time to time, the SEC does its best work, not through the cumbersome and formal rulemaking process, but instead by talking to the marketplace. Um, it's a dirty word in Washington right now, but we do this thing that I, as a practicing lawyer, when I was at Wattel Lifting for some time, always valued very much which was the ability to get guidance from the staff about what their expectations are and why. That, that process enables us to talk to the market, hear from solid practitioners who are developing the most cutting edge solutions to, um, to business problems, and give them feedback about the questions that might arise under the securities laws as a consequence of those choices. I think that um, so far, it is fair to say our efforts in the um, uh, in the cryptocurrency space, in the ICO space, and that most cutting edge challenges we face have been by going this route. A case by case, careful determination uh, through communications with industry about what we're comfortable with and where we would have questions. And I actually think it has so far been one of the finest moments um, uh, under uh, my, my terrific chairman, Jay Clayton. Because we have taken a measured, balanced, careful approach that reflects what we do well, which is to talk to the market about what's happening. Um, I don't yet have the sense that the market is in a position where we could pursue a cumbersome rulemaking and be confident that we would be making a rule that would... So this was their, their plan. He says it, he also says it here. Nothing in the nature of a cryptocurrency, the nature of the asset itself that gives you pause. It's the structure of the markets those assets are traded in rather than features of the asset itself. Is well, that's that exactly right. That's very fair, Rob. And let me add one more uh, about crypto in particular. The other question we face that is very challenging is, is this a security and to what degree is it a security under the securities laws? And I think, I'll be honest, I think my colleagues have done a great job about this. Mm. Um, the director of our division of corporation finance is a man named Bill Hinman who did an, he, he gave a speech where he laid out, here's how we think about this. Um, and gave a set of principles that the market can follow in understanding. Here's how you know if you have a. And remember, that was just supposed, that was his personal opinion. They just flat lied for all that time. Then this I'll never forget. This is Charles Gasparino. I dug this up. This was from May of 2018, and everybody had missed it. I remember getting on the phone with John Deaton. It was either a Saturday or a Sunday morning. Um, and I played this for John Deaton on speakerphone on my phone, and he literally heard it and he said, got him. This was what nobody knew. It's somewhat dispersed. What we can tell you now, because I've been spending a lot of time talking to major players in the cryptocurrency, in the blockchain industry, is that they are starting to come together with a consensus, starting to build together an organizational route, where, roots where they can deal with the growing regulation, which is coming from the SEC mainly, where they consider anything that's traded inside a blockchain to be a currency under their oversight. So what we do know, and I've been, I, like I said, I've been doing a lot of reporting about this, Blockchain and cryptocurrency industry is looking to establish a self-regulatory organization along the lines of like NASDAQ and the NYC. To give it legitimacy. Back give it legitimacy and to give it set of parameters and best practices and also to deal with the regulators, the top regulators, the SEC. Um, obviously, this comes amid increased scrutiny by the SEC uh, and the SEC launched a massive crackdown on everything, blockchain, crypto oriented. There's going to be a lot of cases coming out of here. But here's what we, what we understand, which is interesting. This self-regulatory agency could be put through. And I think this is the biggest effort yet where they have 
major white shoe law firms they've hired something known as the Brooklyn Project. Uh, they're going to they're going to publish best practices and seek government regulation at some point as an SRO, as something along the lines of the New York Stock Exchange and Nasdaq. And it's created by two, I would say, industry leaders: a guy named Joe Lubin, Andrew Keys. They they are part of something known as Ethereum and Consensus. These are big cryptocurrency blockchain companies. Mm -hmm. They are working on this through this thing known as the Brooklyn Project. They have a lot of sources and friends on Wall Street. This, to me, will be the way that cryptocurrency and blockchain, the technology, gets its gets beyond the sewage <laughs> rationale. They are going to lead the effort to essentially systematize and rationalize and create a consumer protection organization through brought with blockchain and cryptocurrency and get and this is the key thing because they are working from what I understand with the SEC the CFTC on this a self-regulatory organization which will differentiate between stuff that can be regulated by as securities like Bitcoin and st other stuff that you have through blockchain like computer technology so Andrew Keys apparently he met with Andrew Keys because later Andrew Keys tried to tried to downplay this on Twitter and Charles Gasparino says no that's what you told me is that this was SEC and CFTC they were signing off on this that's what you told me then we got this so, so once you know that Joseph Lubin was behind the scenes working with these guys it it really then you start to see stuff like this. We were finding all this stuff. And we're very confident uh, that we understand how to do that. Remember, without. They were allowing this guy to, he literally had a token foundry. The whole purpose of all of this was to create a Bitcoin and, a, and an Ethereum to, to give those a free pass and create a monopoly so that you had Bitcoin and you had Ethereum where they could issue tokens at will. Money printer. Think money printer. And have a monopoly, then slam the door on everything else. The Tory bodies uh, considering those kinds of token securities. So you're of the opinion that today there's no chance that Ethereum can be deemed a security. Oh, so, so with respect to Ether, now we did our we did our legal homework a long time ago. We delayed our token launch for about seven months. Um, Ether is was never considered a cryptocurrency. We always considered it a fuel, one of the first cri yes. crypto commodities. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and essentially, because people are donating their resources, it uh, started out uh, quite decentralized. If you if you haven't realized it by now, what you're hearing is just complete bullshit. Okay, sorry for the sorry for the bad language. It was in a context in which there were no, I, nobody had heard the term ICO, it wasn't an ICO. Stephen Neryoff later said that Ethereum was the first ICO and he designed it. He, he, cre he came up with the idea for crypto fuel and calling it a product. Called it a token launch. It, uh, it was sold uh, very explicitly uh, to software developers, to people who intended to use the system. Was That's not a lie because he had the disguised whales video where he's talking to a room full of investors and telling them if you want to buy a bunch and you want to get a deal, you can get multiple identities. For speculative purposes, um, we're very confident that it started. They haven't sold any for speculative purposes. Think Mike Novogratz. Realized and people bought it for those reasons, and that it has grown uh, radically decentralized. And, and he even said it was like created. It was decentralized when it was created. It was a security, and certainly isn't now. So for the audience that are non-technical people, right? No. And they want- Remember, he just said that they've never sold it as an investment. To invest into Ethereum, how can, uh, first of all, how does that work? I mean, when, when they, you guys were gonna uh, launch in February and now it's been put, put right. forth here. So we're, so it's not the launch that we have. So we are going to start the Ether presale mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks. So the Ether presale will be an opportunity for anyone to purchase Ether. Or Ether is the internal currency inside of the Ethereum system, sort of like the XRP and Ripple. Now, is there a big window of opportunity for people uh, to, to get in, or yes. is there just like a one day opportunity? No, it's something uh, we're thinking of. It might be for might be forty five days. It might be thirty. It might be sixty days. Okay, so there's plenty of time. Sort of yes. an incremental thing. So the earlier you go yes. in. The earlier you get in, though. Okay, so 
I'm gonna I'm gonna save some of these for for the group. Uh, I'll go. I'm gonna go through some more in the group and, and some stuff I was never able to cover, or wasn't never did want to cover during Ethgate. It was like, but I'll show some of that here in a second. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family. Go in DAIXRP.com. We'll talk about this Ethgate stuff a little further. 